Hey there, neighbor. Welcome to Wild Homestead Living. I'm Julie. And I'm Kevin. And this is our December Homestead Hangout, where we bring you an update on what's been going on in our world for the past month. And as you can see, one of the exciting developments for us is it snowed. We're expecting another snowstorm any minute. But really for us, December was characterized by things not going quite according to plan, facing challenges in our projects, and learning how to roll with that and adapt to the new circumstances. Absolutely. So we've got a lot to share with you, so let's get started. As you can see in the intro, we experienced significant snowfall in December. Snow is rare enough in our area that when it comes, it shuts down everything. Determined not to be snowed in, Julie and I got on driveway cleaning duty right away, and her snow shoveling skills were a testament to how well she was recovering from her recent surgery. While she cleared the lower part of the drive, I went over the part nearest the house three times before calling it good. Our siding project continued throughout December and is still ongoing. From a distance, it looks great, but close inspection has revealed improperly installed siding and damage to our roof, window screens, and chimney. We even caught workers smoking pot on the job. They were working on ladders and scaffolds, so we feared for their safety just as much as the quality of their work. <laughs> it's sitting in the bush right below me. It's kind of floating in the upper part of the bush. It looks like there's some other garbage in there too. Yeah, I see some plastic. Now I see the I see the downspout in the bush. So this piece goes up there. The project is ongoing and we're trying to work with our project manager to address the concerns we have identified. We felt like we exercised due diligence in choosing the company to replace our siding. We did our research and thought we had made a good choice. So far, the company has failed to live up to their own stated standards. Only time will tell if they make things right. We didn't have a lot of wildlife sightings on our property in December, in part due to the constant activity from the ongoing sighting project, but also because one of our trail cams failed, so we only had one working camera throughout the month. We reviewed that footage from that cam and found a clip from mid-November that we had missed before, where this black-capped chickadee seems to be attacking the camera. He was likely picking an insect or something else off the top of it before flying off. Before snowfall, deer continued to be regular visitors to our yard, and we saw them on the one remaining cam as well, coming both day and night. They all looked very healthy in their winter coats, and that was good to see because as the seasons changed, it got very cold and wet here on the homestead. Our most exciting wildlife sighting of December was a bobcat that we saw move across part of our property during the day. Uh, this is a video footage from an earlier encounter with what we believe is the same cat. Uh, he came and looked in our windows on a summer day. He didn't see me right away, but when he did, he retreated appropriately. A lot of people are afraid when they see predators like bobcats on their property, especially if they have chickens or other small livestock. Uh, we are thrilled to have him here. When we do have chickens, we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can to prevent him from having access to them. And that way we'll make sure that we're good neighbors to him and he remains a good neighbor to us as well. Although some late December snowfall slowed down the number of wild animal encounters we were having on the property, Julie bought me some tools for Christmas that should increase our ability to monitor the property, including three trail cams. One I installed along the main trail down in our woods. The second one I installed out on the perimeter of our property in an area that we hadn't been monitoring before, but we suspect is very active wildlife travel corridor based on the trail and the open space here. The third one I installed at the back of our property monitoring a part of the woods where we know animals come and go frequently. And this is where we saw the bobcat earlier in the month as well. So we'll be excited to see what these cameras capture in the upcoming weeks and months, and we'll be even more excited to share it with all of you here at Wild Homestead Living. For Christmas this year, Julie and I bought an Alaska cedar to act as our Christmas tree. And this is a live tree that we'll be able to plant on the property after Christmas is over. It spent a little time acclimating in the garage, and then we wheeled it into the house and set it up into the living room so we could enjoy it for the holiday. Emmett took an interest right away. We decorated the tree with simple white lights. We decided not to hang decorations on it because the tree itself is beautiful enough. And well, there are a few other reasons too that we decided ornaments might not be the best idea. With Christmas over, this tree will be planted on our property and we'll be able to enjoy it for years to come. Winter is a great time for indoor projects and sewing and crafting projects. 
and a month or two ago I mentioned that I was going to be doing an order for canvas because I love building canvas products like coats and bags and things like that. So this is my order from Big Duck Canvas and these are both American made. What I'm noticing is that they're 12 ounce canvases that seem even heavier duty which is great except for I'm not totally sure they're going to work in my domestic um, home heavy duty machine. So stay tuned and I will give you a report on how that works once I get some more data. I came out here yesterday and took a look. It's the first time I've been able to come out here since the dumpster moved and since my surgery. And while it looks like our soil might be recovering a little bit, I don't think it's recovering as much as I'd hoped it would. And I'm judging that by just listening to the plants, like some of the plants aren't growing it at the rate that I would expect like they did last winter. So I'm gonna go do an assessment. Looks like the arugula started to do well and then it just got really eaten by maybe some moths, some kind of worm. I see a lot of not only holes, but a lot of this poop. There is the culprit. I am going to put this out in the outside garden so that some of our bird friends can have a meal and this can stop having a meal on our vegetables. This bed is looking okay. <gasps> Look, it's broccoli. At least some things are going right. Yeah, I think they're gonna have to go. So while these Brussels sprouts didn't grow in the way that we'd hoped to make them edible, it was a great learning experience. And part of the reason that we moved to the valley we live in is there's so many amazing farmers around us, which this situation makes me even more grateful that we can go buy locally and support our community. Just a few minutes down the road from our homestead is one of our very favorite places to buy local produce, and that is Carnation Farms. One of our favorite parts of the farm and something near and dear to our heart is that they have learned to peacefully exist with the wildlife alongside of their agricultural practices. Back home in the kitchen, I enjoyed my Christmas present from Kevin, which were pasta rollers. These units allow us to make homemade pasta that's fresh, healthy, and affordable. These noodles were added to vegetable soup we made for the week. So that's what we've been up to. Uh, we definitely didn't have the month we had hoped we would have. We had a lot of challenges, but we're learning to just kind of roll with the punches and make the best of bad situations. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. Yes, indeed. And I would say that's really part of homesteading is making a plan, but being willing to adapt as that changes. And if you are into this kind of thing and would like to live your own homestead dream, we have just created a brand new quick start guide that's full of ideas that you can implement whether you live in a city, country, or somewhere in between. And you can download it for free at our website, which is wildhomesteadliving.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. I think we nailed another first try.